Tacoma homeless encampment ban goes into effect Monday. Everything in the media has been, we're banning encampments in Tacoma. Now, what the fine print says is that, yeah, we're only really banning the encampments that are within a 10 block radius of existing homeless shelters in Tacoma. So they're basically for those folks that are seeking to stay inside in a shelter and try and get their, get back on their feet using given city resources. We're trying to let those folks do their thing and get, you know, get back up on their feet again. And so we're trying to keep the rest of the folks that are living basically on the sidewalks and on the streets and in the parks. We're trying to keep them away. We're separating. That's literally what this law does is it says, Hey, you can't be within 10 blocks of, you know, city sanctioned shelter. <clears throat> so it's not like you're banning homeless encampments, period. You're not banning them across this, across the, uh, entire city of Tacoma. That's just not happening. But the way the media, you know, throws it out there, and you know, if it bleeds, it leads. I get that. And I do that at times as well, because you want to get people to read your stuff, but then you still got to bring the goods. And that's what we do here on News for Reasonable People. So let's talk about this. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what the general consensus is, because what is going on across the United States right now is you've got these cities that suffer from this. And there's a lot of them, especially a lot of them here on the West Coast. They are all at that point where they're like, okay, yeah, we declared here in King County, we declared, you know, this an emergency seven years ago, and it's only gotten worse. So what are we going to do? That's literally so they're, they're throwing out these laws. Okay, make this illegal, make that illegal. You can't do this. You can't do that. This is what we're doing. We're going to build 20,000 units of housing down in Portland. You know, we're going to have we're going to have five shelters of 500 people a pop. That kind of stuff is coming out rapid fire now. And it's because the, the situation has gotten so bad. Let's jump on in. Let's see what we got. A controversial new ordinance designed to get more homeless people into shelters in Tacoma goes into effect today. Those who break the new law face fines and jail time. Unless you're absolutely not doing what authorities tell you to do over an extended period of time, I don't think anybody's doing jail time. I think most of these folks are going to move on from wherever they're at. And I don't really have a problem with this law that Tacoma's put in place. I think it it does some good. Is it a be all and end all for the homeless situation? Absolutely not. It just moves them, you know, the existing folks further away from services, which, you know, you got to do something. You got to do something to kind of get us back on track. This law doesn't really do much, but it's a step in the right direction because it doesn't outlaw homeless, you know, living in general. And in a city like Tacoma, I don't think it's ever going to be there, but you're going to go down some of these roads of, all right, we got to do something. Here's what they're doing. No one will be forced out of an encampment today, Monday. Two-week notices will go out to encampments that are near a homeless shelter. It's not news to anyone in this encampment that the city of Tacoma wants them out. And they specifically want them out of this encampment because it's encroaching on the 10-block radius rule that they've got. They're just trying to give people some room to breathe and some, some space because what we do know, what we do know is that when you have a bunch of these encampments, you know, close unsanctioned encampments, close to the sanctioned encampments, close to the city run, you know, shelters, it brings that influence with them, right? It brings the crime, criminal activity, selling of stolen goods, prostitution, drugs. Drugs are the big ones. You can't have drugs in the city sanctioned encampment in the city shelters. You can't do that against the rules. And so the closer you have unsanctioned encampments, you get the picture. It's just not going to be good for the people that are already in there that are already struggling. They're trying to do their thing. So the city and the people that are you know taking advantage of city offered up resources, we're just trying to give them a little buffer space, physically give them a 10 block buffer space. And I have no issues with that. My issues would be, well, you're not really doing enough here. But this storyline is so big, right? I mean, it's just, it's so encompassing and 
you know, the amount of money it's going to take to dig our way out of it. And I don't see us digging our way out of this anytime soon because there's no magic fix. You're kind of stuck any which way, you know, you take all the people and you dump them off on an island. All right. Well, yeah, I know a lot of you recommend Yeah, That's the thing. That's what we do. All right. C can you imagine that actually happening? No, it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. It's wishful thinking, right? So we got to deal with this other stuff, which are real, you know, what they're calling solutions <clears throat> that to me are just kicking the can down the road. But all right. Okay. It's 2022. We've been dealing with this for years. Here's what we're doing. City leaders said that they are trying this approach to get more people off the streets and into housing. Mm, yeah, that's what they always say they're trying to do. But the actions... Well, okay, so you want to live in a tent in your own little deal, doing your own deal, doing your own thing. You don't want to be in the city structure for whatever reason it is. Are you going to be encouraged to get into the system, to get into the shelter system, if you got to move your tent just a little bit outside of the 10 block radius? Are you going to be you know, going down that road of getting get, getting off the streets and into housing? No. No, you, you're just gonna, you're just, just gonna move your tent around. That's literally what you're gonna do. Yeah, 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 man said from inside a tent. I'm already ready to do it right now, just to be ahead of them. You know what I mean? So he's literally just gonna move his tent to wherever that 10 block radius is. And they're gonna figure out where all these, you know, uh, the magic divider, the invisible dividing line are. So he won't have to move just yet. But the city's ban on camping with the 10 block radius of a homeless shelter does go into effect today. Is it going to have any impact? Nah, it's just going to be another layer of rules that people aren't going to follow, right? And then they're going to have some teeth, you know, at the tail end. Hey, well, we did make this illegal. But is it really going to do much? No. It's inhumane just to let people live on the streets and encampments, John Hines said. And let's try to find ways to get them into shelters as fast as we can. See, that the, the attitude here is let's just find ways to get them into shelter. It's as if there is a shelter bed available for all the people in tents that those people, the argument is that those people would gladly go indoors to make that happen. That's just not the case. You've got a whole bunch of people that want to live willy nilly out on the streets in their tents. And the reason is they don't have to follow any rules there. Yeah, they can do their drugs. They can do their criminal activity. They can buy stuff. They can sell stuff. They can do whatever the F they want without any repercussions. Why wouldn't they continue living that lifestyle? That's literally what they're doing. And that's where some of this stuff, it, it it just doesn't really even register on a radar other than, all right, well, you're within 10 blocks, I guess you got to move. So Hines, a native Tacoma and Seattle City Council, or a City Council member since 2019, said he drafted the ordinance to address the issue of homelessness and encampments. Don't get me wrong, I, I don't have a problem with this law. I think it's a good law. I think it does what it should do which is give people a little bit of space if that's what they're looking for from the negative you know, influence that you get when you walk up to any one of these homeless encampments. People want to say, well, we're mostly law-abiding citizens here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, I, I read the news. I understand what's coming out of these homeless encampments, and it's not law-abiding citizen activity. I think the idea is we're looking really focused on the options, Hines said. What's available? So driving them to something that they want, asking people on the streets, what kind of shelters do you want? What kind of sites are you looking for? I think those are the wrong questions. I think it's, here's what you get. And if you don't like that, here is your other option. That's jail. It's what the city of Bellevue does. And we have remarkably low homeless situation. Yep, you can go to the shelter. Yep. But if you pull any of the shenanigans that folks do over in Seattle, well, you know, Officer Friendly is going to persuade you otherwise. Homeless, the Tacoma City Council's decision to implement a camping ban proved contentious. The ordinance passed during a heated debate last month. Within a day, homeless advocates were vowing to sue the city. This is unconstitutional. This is illegal. We can't have this. People shouldn't have to go to jail because they're homeless. No, they shouldn't. 
but people living in homeless encampments unsanctioned also shouldn't be able to game the system. And that's exactly what's going on right now. I've often said, said many, many times, if you focused on getting the mentally ill people out of the unsanctioned homeless encampments, get those folks the help that they need, whether they want to or not. Second issue, if you're addicted to drugs, you got to go into detox talks, you got to go into rehab, you got to go whatever, involuntarily. I don't know how that would ever happen. But if you can make those two functions work, which you'll never be able to do, then you've now got the resources because I believe that takes out such a large, large swath of who we've got living in these tents on the sidewalks and the streets in Seattle. I believe once you take those two, two, two factions out, those two groups of people out, people with homeless, people with mental issues and substance, you know, terrible substance abuse issues. And it is inhumane to let them continue living on the sidewalks. If you aren't in, you know, control of your mind, you shouldn't be living there. And if you are so bad off that you're living in a tent because you're so wildly addicted to drugs, you probably belong in detox. You probably belong in rehab. And so you get those two groups out of there. Now you're down to folks that are basically, you know, have fallen into homelessness somehow, some shape, but want to get back up on their feet. If you're able to focus on those, that group, that group with the amount of resources that we already have, that's where I think that'd be a win. But getting from point A to point B, that's where given the system that we have and given the fact that we're a democratic government here in Seattle and basically King County and basically all of Washington, right? We had a few victories for the Republicans, but it was, it was not a good showing. This last election, yeah, that was some... Red wave didn't show up. Red trickle didn't even show up. Did red anything show up? Yeah. Didn't really, other than Florida, didn't really seem like it, right? But Hines said that he believes they are on firm legal ground, talking about homeless advocates vowing to sue the city. I think what we're doing is perfectly within the laws, he said. And I've worked with our city attorney's office to try and understand what we're trying to do here. Most cities have laws on the books that basically state and outline or at least guidance, hey, you can't live willy nilly wherever. You can't live on public property. You can't live in parks. You just can't live there. Most cities have laws on the books, but they don't want to enforce them because then you're like, oh, look what the police are doing to the poor homeless man. The homeless man's got, you know, an AR-15, a bunch of stolen goods and runs hookers out of his tent. You know, that's a that's a broad generalization, but there is also some of that going on. And the ultimate deal is, is that people living in unsanctioned homeless encampments, they don't want to live under rules. That's the number one reason they won't go to the city sanctioned shelter or bed. But the city's attempt won't help those who are homeless get back on their feet, a man in an encampment said. They make it seem like, you know, the shelter is everything. Everything is going to be all right, he said, but it's not. No, but it's a step to try and help people go in the right direction. You know, m maybe tiny homes are something because you've got enough funding to make the tiny homes available to people who literally homelessness is their number one issue. If it's not a mental health care issue and if it's not a substance abuse issue, they're down on their luck because they lost their job. They had whatever, whatever happened. And this does happen to people. Oftentimes, if you ask them, you know, are drugs part of your life? You know, they'll be, if they're honest, they'll say, yeah, they are. And that's, you know, a large portion of what got me here as well. So, you know, there's, there's so many different angles to this story and outlying homeless encampments within a 10 block radius. Is it going to do much for Tacoma? No, but it's one tiny little step that I believe is in the right direction. And that is recognizing exactly how bad things have gotten. And you got to do something because the trajectory that you're heading with homelessness right now is not, it's not viable. It's not doable. It's not long term. Can't do it. So got to do something, right? Anyone caught violating the law would be fined $250 and jailed for 30 days. 
Nobody in Tacoma is going to fine anybody 250 bucks. No judge is going to put somebody in jail for 30 days for being homeless. That's not happening. But the teeth of the law are there. And now you can say, all right, that's fine. If you don't want to do this, you know, we've got the option. It's now illegal for you to live with the 10, 10 block radius of city sanctioned shelter. Therefore, we have the option of putting you in jail. You remember when you heard that new law? So that's the teeth that, you know, we're looking at. And that's the positive side of it, if you're going to see one on this story. Hines said that the city's nine shelters can't accommodate everyone. So some people will almost certainly remain on the street. The vast majority of people will remain on the street because they do not want to live within the confines of the rules of the city run shelters. They can't take their stuff there. They can't have their significant other there, their partner, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. They can't take their pets there. You know, they, they can't be high. They can't bring drugs in. They can't be boozed up. They can't drink there. There's, you know, there's a time frame on when you can come and go. And all of those things are a hard no go for those that are used to their lifestyle living in unsanctioned tents. So whether you've got this law in the books or not, not much is going to change in Tacoma. Not much is going to change in the aroma of Tacoma. But at least there's at least there's this on the books now. Will it do any good? It's probably going to do a little bit, but you know, big picture. Yeah, you're going to be stuck with much of the same because every other city would do the same thing if it really had a big impact. But this is literally how Tacoma is handling it. They're going to throw one book on the laws. We're going to see how it goes. <clears throat> don't expect a lot, but um, at least this is a law in the right direction, I believe. That's it for me. Thanks so much for being here. We'll catch up soon. Bye for now.